Chief here. I'm thinking I'm going to spend only a couple more weeks talking about basic training. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about one of our drill sergeants and how I got in trouble with him a couple times and how I got in trouble with a second one or with another drill sergeant. Uh, we had Drill Sergeant Johnson, I've talked about him before. He came over from the medical side of the house and he wanted to prove a point that medical personnel can be drill sergeants too. But I think he went a little extreme every now and then. Uh, but well, the first time or one of the times I got in trouble with him is that we were doing the sight box for the M16 training. Basically it's a box, it's got kind of a groove in it and you're supposed to do a sight picture with your aperture and your sight posts and guy marks it on a piece of paper because he's got this little uh, like an eye patch cover but yeah I can't explain it fully, I don't remember how it all went but he's supposed to put a pencil mark every time you say hey I got a bullseye and then you know then you do it two or three times well we were doing that in groups of three or four or five I don't really remember so you know only two people can do it once one marking one using his M16 so I found a nice comfortable doorway so I put my back up against in the door frame and of course I closed my eyes because you got really comfortable but I really didn't fall asleep I got into that twilight zone where you hear things you're still hearing all the conversation, you're still hearing what's going on around you, but your eyes just don't want to open for some reason. Well, my fellow soldiers were trying to give me signals without getting in trouble because it got awful quiet. That told me something. And then it's like you got that sixth sense where you can feel the presence of another body, and that's what I felt. And like I said, it got quiet, so I'm in that twilight zone. My eyes are closed. And I'm like, wow, something's going to happen. And just before I opened up my eyes, I felt that ESP, whatever you want to call it, just before I opened my eyes, I got conked in the head by another head. And, of course, it was Drill Sergeant Johnson. Sleeping, huh? Yeah, whatever. I, I sucked up and said yes. I didn't want to tell him how I was in the twilight zone because I knew that wouldn't go over well. So, uh... My punishment was, was while the rest of the guys were doing the sight box, was for me to put my elbows as close together as I could while holding my M16. That actually helped. As I said previously, I thought I did better in the foxhole, but as it turned out, if you looked at my stats, I actually did better outside the foxhole, even prone unsupported. It was that support because that is an awful firm base because the wider you go, the more wobbly room you got, so I got punished. Uh, the second time I screwed up with him, uh, we were in formation outside and one of the other platoons uh, did a cadence at us. So my big mouth back in the fourth squad on the fourth platoon, Hey Johnson, why don't we give them ugly? You can get on down and give me some push-ups. Here we are in full battle gear. I mean, had our rucksacks on, we had all our webbing, we had our may have had our weapon so you had to do the push-ups with the weapon over your wrist while you do uh, push-ups and of course the doctors complained because we had one soldier that was part of the reason he got discharged is because he got dropped one too many times with the uh, stuff and messed up his back and he got canceled so doctors didn't like that uh, Johnson, like I said, went overboard because when we would ride in the cattle cars, the cattle cars are basically a trailer pulled by a vehicle and uh, kind of like a um, moving van, so to speak. There were seats in them, but we could never sit down because most of the time we had on all our gear, so we, you, didn't, you couldn't sit down. And there was barely enough room to sit down if you didn't have any gear, so we were always in there crammed to the corner and was always our platoon was always filling one of these things and we barely fit but of course Johnson would sit in the doorway where the doorway was and of course he had to have arm's length room around him because you can't crowd the drill sergeant so the rest of us were like this and we're like oh I can't wait to get off of this thing so I don't know how many times we had to ride like that because Johnson seemed to always ride with us I messed well I didn't really mess up but I developed a code Gee, imagine that, you develop a code going to Port Dix, New Jersey in October to December. So I had a hoarse voice like this one day, so I wasn't shouting. So the one of the other drill sergeants got wind of that, came over and st 
stuck, I had my cap on, and he stuck the brown round right there at the bridge of my nose, and he leaned in and says, you're not sounding off today. Sorry, drill sergeant, I don't have, you know, it's like, well, you have a cold. Well, you should take care of yourself better. I would like to go to sick call and get a cold pack. And, no, you can't go to sick call to get a cold pack. Cold pack generally was just sepical lozenges, so you could just have something for your throat, because we couldn't have hard candy. Hard candy is just as good as a lodging to help coat your throat so it doesn't feel so bad. So I got yelled at that day. Ah, had some other stuff. Oh, some funny things that happened while I was at basic training. Now, <laughs> one day, looking out our window, see the street between the two barracks, look down to the left, and here's all these rucksacks lined up in a row, ready to go out to the field. And in one of the rows is a set of bunk beds from out of the barracks room. And we're like, what the heck is... Well, we come to find out that bunk buddies, one of them had a candy bar, neither one wanted to fess up, so the both of them got punished. So for the field problem that they were going on, they had to take their bunk bed with them. And I'm talking mattress and all. I guess it didn't rain or snow on them, because I would hate to had for them to pay for a mattress and another funny thing is that the female company ahead of me or ahead of us uh, when they went to soldier sweepstakes which is where you go to get tested on everything that they've been teaching you in basic training they were like uh, I think 33 percent to almost 50 percent no-go the first trip so they got to, I think they had did it on a Friday. They went back the following Monday after studying all weekend. And the rest of them were a, uh, were a go. Got to wet my whistle. So within a week, of course, they got to replace the females. And I go to the chow hall one day, lunchtime. And I'm looking around, I got my tray, I'm sitting down, and a female company came in behind us. And it looked like the Army took a couple buses, drove to a local junior high, and grabbed young females, put them on a bus, and said, you're all in the Army now, because that's what it looked like. These girls looked so immature and so young, it was unreal. And, of course, uh, they had... Uh, pajamas and house coats to wear in the evening hours. Once again, my dog is in the background making all kinds of noises. And uh, but they were still giving us the the titty show, and of course that caused a big stink between the two buildings because ours looked down on theirs. Theirs was down the hill from us, and uh, so they did that for a couple nights, and then it finally quit. And then one of the idiots in my platoon couple rooms down he got on the top bunk took all his clothes off turned the lights off of the room and then flashed a shined a flashlight on his nether regions and then he got caught nothing much came out of that except a good ass chewing I don't know if he probably got stuck in one of those details that clean the galvanized buckets I don't know as I talked about previously so like I said there's some strange things went on uh, other funny events really not that much uh, Basic training was basic training. Uh, however, marching. Uh, we were told when we first were formed into a company, basically saying, you guys are going to do a retreat ceremony. That means that you go to the headquarters building where the main post flag, United States flag, is hanging, and then you do the ceremony where the flag comes down, and then after that you march around in front and do a pass and review of the commanding officer of the, of the post of Fort Dix. So every time we march, either as a platoon or as a company, the drill sergeants are up and down our ranks yelling at us, you know, get in step, you know, get, get on line, look to your right because you always got on the right, got on the right. And we would practice, you know, the turns because, you know, those got to be perfect because you swing as a unit. That means some guys are taking half steps, quarter steps, and the bigger steps and trying to maintain. Because we were told we're going up against the female company, the one that I talked about previously. And we were told females know how to march because they know how to sashay, so to speak. They got that wiggle in their hips that makes them march perfectly and in step two. So we were told and 
ground into us. We got to beat these females. It was for our company commander because it was we were his fifth and final company, and he had won the previous two, I think. So we were told, you know, do it for the commander, do it for the commander, and then we did it. We won. They were all happy about it. The commander was happy. But then the commander said, told the platoon, or told the drill sergeants, he says, well, when it comes time for graduation, I don't want to see any skinheads. Well, here's where Johnson shows his belligerence. You know, here he's been telling us, you know, support the commander, march for the commander, do this for the commander. And then he takes us all to get a haircut like two days before graduation. And of course, we get our heads shaved back to where they were at the beginning of training. Because no company commander is going to tell me how my troops are going to look on graduation day. And I'm like thinking, well, geez, company commander kind of outranks you. Yeah, this is Snickers. He just hits at the dog. Bye, Snickers. You guys go fight. And Masha quit running into the camera. That was Masha tipping the camera. I'm having all kinds of fun with my pets today. Masha's a Siberian Husky. Fairly good size, fully grown, 45 pounds, bundle of joy. But that's not part of my basic training. Got to wet the whistle again. Uh, so, yeah. We, in our platoon... Our platoon was the only one that got our heads shaved, so to speak, for graduation day in December. And I told you last week how we all were freezing because the drill sergeant was looking down the front of our field jackets and telling us to go get our field jacket liners in that we turned in the following or the previous Friday. Yeah, so it was cold on graduation day. We did not wear our black coat, the overcoat. We went, it was cold, it was blustery, and... It was short. I mean, it was one of the shortest graduations I've ever been to, it seemed like. Because we didn't stand still very long. There was no big, long-winded speech because, as I noticed in my military career, career, some of those speeches got longer. We learned to start timing them. And we would say, and then we'd back and go sometimes tell these officers, yeah, you spoke longer than this guy, and you were the outgoing, and you were the incoming, and stuff like that. We'll talk more about that. I don't, don't mind being in a parade like that. I can't think of anything else that was fun or funny or doing with the females. So this is Chief out. I'll come up with some ideas and probably end basic training next week. Like I said, we were a rush company because we were there the middle of uh, October to the middle of December. And they wanted us out before Christmas break. They did not want us to come back to do further training. So Chief out. See you next week. I uh, don't know what else to say. Bye.